Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified when I upload videos. So let's get into it. So today I'm going to be trying out one of my cast iron skillets. This is the largest one and I'm going to be making some southern fried cabbage because I've been wanting that for about two weeks now and I bought the cabbage and I'm going to cook it up. So let's get started. So I have my skillet on a medium low heat and I really like this handle because this sucker is heavy and that will definitely come in handy. So let me show you what I have to go into my cabbage. So I have my cabbage all washed, cut up and cored. I have my onions, red and yellow, and then I have some sweet peppers all cut up and ready to go. And then I have some sausage here, some smoked sausage. And that's what I'm going to be putting in my cabbage as well as some bacon. I just had a couple of slices left, cut them up into manageable sizes. And then I have my spices. I have some Worcestershire sauce, some salt, some black pepper, some garlic, some onion, some of this Creole seasoning, and as well as some of this Cajun spice seasoning. So into my hot skillet, I'm going to start with the bacon, and then I'm going to just brown this up until it's semi-crispy, but not quite all the way crispy because that's the way my hubby likes it and he's going to be eating most of this so we're going to cook it up the way he likes it so sort of crispy but not all the way crispy So once the bacon is crisped up, I'm going to add in the sausage and brown it on both sides. Once the sausage is browned on both sides, I'm going to take it out of the pan. And at this point, I did notice while I was noticing while it was frying up that it was sticking in one spot. But that's a hot spot on my stove, so I don't think it's the pan. I just think it's my stove. Even in my regular um, frying pans, my stainless steel frying pans, that particular spot on the stove burns a bit when I have it up high. So I did turn it down a little bit lower and it was fine going to saute my veggies right in that dripping from the bacon and the sausage so now I'm going to add in my veggies my yellow onions and peppers were frozen because they were from my garden last season and I had them in my freezer so they created a little bit of liquid I figured I would just let that evaporate out and then add in any of my seasonings that I was going to add at this point. So I'm just going to let that evaporate down as you can see. And then I'm just going to add my spices like my pepper and my salt, etc. So now I'm just adding in my chicken bouillon cube that I just crushed up with some water and my Worcestershire sauce. To add the star of the show, the cabbage. I am going to put as much as I can into the frying pan and then I'm going to just put a lid on it and let it wilt down and then add the rest of it.
So this is how much cabbage I have left. It's about maybe four or six cups. And I don't think any more is going to fit in this frying pan. So I'm just going to put the top on this and I'm going to do something else with the rest of it. And hopefully it will work. Okay, so the rest of the cabbage I'm just going to steam on its own. And then hopefully I can fit it in the frying pan once it's bolted down. But as you can see, it is quite a bit. There is a steam tray in the bottom, but it's not that tall. And this pot is almost full with cabbage. So as you can see, my cabbage in the frying pan has wilted down quite a bit and I'm 95% sure that I can get the rest of the cabbage that is in this pot, which is also wilted down into the frying pan. So let's do that. It is very full, but it all fit, which I'm so happy about. So I'm just gonna mix the two together and make sure they're well incorporated. Okay, so now that the cabbage is just about cooked and wilted completely down, I'm going to add back in my sausage and bacon and stir that in and then it's going to be ready to eat. So it does have a little bit of water left at the bottom of the pan. So what I'm going to do is just leave the top off and let it cook out and then it will be definitely ready to eat. So that's it, my southern fried cabbage. It smells awesome, it tastes even better, and I hope you try it. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.